So now the second part of the cranial nerves uh, video. We're starting with the third cranial nerve. Which is the oculo motor nerve. This we already know from the first video that this nerve have two nuclei. The first is the motor nuclei, motor nucleus, and the second is the parasympathetic. nucleus the motor nucleus is called the motor nucleus basically so that's yeah, just motor nucleus there's a second nucleus the parasympathetic nucleus we know is the edinger best fall nucleus so now the pathway The post, it starts, the nerve originates from the posterior cranial fossa. From the posterior cranial fossa, it will go into the middle cranial fossa. There it will go to the lateral wall of cavernous sinus and will reach the anterior aspect of lateral wall of the cavernous sinus and at this point it will divide into two uh, branches the superior division and the inferior division. Now this will enter orbit through superior orbital fissure Now after this, we'll actually be continuing it like this. Um, about the superior division, it will supply only two muscles. The first one is the superior rectus muscle and the second one is the levator palpebrae. superioris. About the inferior division, the inferior division will supply intraocular muscles 
and the rest of the three extraocular muscles. The three extraocular muscles which will be supplied by the inferior division of the oculomotor nerve are medial rectus, inferior rectus, inferior oblique the uh, we are continuing the third cranial nerve we are going to talk about the fibers of the nerve so we know that there is a motor and the parasympathetic fibers The motor fibers are in the middle and the parasympathetic fibers are at the periphery. So this means that when you see the when you see the cross section of the nerve, you'll find something like this. So these are the motor fibers. And these are the parasympathetic fibers. So what happens if the compression of the third cranial nerve occurs? It will cause the damage of parasympathetic fibers because the fibers are at the periphery so it will affect the intraocular muscles we will see paralysis of the intraocular muscles So the patient will have loss of accommodation, far, near and far vision. And Capillary constrictor muscle paralysis will also be seen. There will be dilated pupils. Dilated pupil and a uh, patient will experience blurring. This condition will be called mitriasis. Other than this, what you need to know is that this compression will occur Will be, will be found basically in one posterior cranial fossa 
other lateral wall of cavernous sinus. or within the eyeball. So I'm going, that's it for this, but I'm going to add some other thing in this part it is that it is an, uh, an extra thing to know which will be important that the inferior division of cranial nerves oculomotor cranial nerve has with it attached A parasympathetic ganglion now this ganglion is the ciliary ganglion So there are only four parasympathetic ganglion in the entire body and one of those ganglion is the ciliary ganglion. If you're making notes, write, it, uh, write with it that there are just four parasympathetic ganglion in the entire body. Now, what will happen if there is damage to the motor fibers of third cranial nerve. Five extra ocular muscles paralyze. And this is called of thalmoplegia. Uh, damage to motor fibers you'll see diplopia now talking about the signs of third nerve lesion so what are the signs so the thing is that the first thing that you will see is paralysis the first point is that paralysis of, it's not the first thing that you'll see, but the paralysis of levator palpebrae muscle superioris muscle and what will be the sign when this will occur? What will be the sign that will be shown to us? It will be doses. 
the medical term. Now the second is the paralysis of medial rectus. This will be overcome, overcome by lateral rectus. And this, the medical term for this is abduction. The third is the paralysis of the inferior rectus. And the fourth is the paralysis of inferior oblique muscle. So there will be no upward and lateral movement. This will be overcome by superior oblique muscle. And so the third sign of both of these, the third and the fourth, this will be called, this still will see the sign that there will be downward and lateral movement so this is it for the third cranial nerve